man stand by me, only if I'm right I come out of triple darkness just to see the light If I say it once, I guarantee I say it twice If they knew me, I ain't going out without a fight In my dreams, I'm a killer, but for God, man Try to play it cool, but it's getting hard, man Rolling with the real and death to all the flaws, man Not too many of me, yeah, it's kinda hard, man In my room, sitting in my room Know they waiting on me and I'm coming soon Never been a sellout, never been a coon Y'all be on the camera acting. That's what we dealing with. That's why I got a problem with people that we grew up with and know and love. And you see George Floyd's neck on the ground. And you see Freddie Gray in the back of an ambulance dying. And you want to ask me about how I'm doing or how my children. Good to see your children. Where's your post about the pain? Right. Preach. So don't talk Preach. to me about why you not in my world. Yeah. About why I might feel standoffish to you. And you know me. Thank you for tuning in to the B2M podcast program. Please hit the subscribe button. We're all ever so grateful for you tuning in and watch the show. Likes, comments, shares. Tell your mama Repost. them about it. All that mama them, auntie. Tell everybody about it. <laughs> hey, I want to, uh, can I recite a poem? For sure. Okay. Let's go. All right. Once riding in old Baltimore, heart filled, head filled with glee. I saw a Baltimorean looking right at me. Now I was eight and very small and he was no whit bigger. And so I smiled, but he poked out his tongue and called me nigger. I saw the whole of Baltimore from May until December of all the things that happened there. That's all that I remember. Shout out to County Cullen. Mm. Great Harlem Renaissance poem. Oh, yeah. That poem is called Incident. Right? One of my wow. favorite poets, Harlem Renaissance poem. That's all that I remember. That's all that well, I remember. My Austin, Texas trip. Now. <laughs> <laughs> you said it's like you are. This is Austin, Texas trip. At least time you got to go. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hey, look. Damn. <laughs> hey man, you know, this is the podcast for we try to heal people, you know. Yeah. We just so glad brother got an opportunity to get that out, you know. But look, y'all know who Dr. Carter G. Woodson is, right? Yes, sir. Right down the you road. He's from the ham, right? That's they right. gonna say Dillwin in all the books. He's from Buckingham. Buckingham. <laughs> right? He's from Buckingham. <laughs> I'm gonna read a quote from Dr. Carter G. Woodson. I wish I had recited it, but I it's I wanna get it exactly right. If you can control a man's thinking. You don't have to worry about his action. Right. When you determine what a man shall think, you do not have to concern yourself about what he will do. If you want to make a man feel that he is inferior, inferior, you do not have to compel him to accept an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. Hmm. And if you make a man think that he is justly an outcast, you do not have to order him to a back door. He will go without being told. Good and the God. most powerful part of what he said is, and if there's no back door, his very nature will demand one. Mm. We're talking about God. what we shared with our young people about politics and social awareness. And I, and I, and I cited that quote because that's what that is to me. It like, like Carter G. Woodson was framing that social awareness starts with who controls the thinking, mm. right? And, our, and our, our ability to be conscious of what's going on. So mm. in this world that we live in, brothers, where uh, there's so many, and even in the polarizing culture of politics in America right now, which what we thought was the worst president in the history of America is actually leading in the polls after going out of office and have about 26 cases on his head. Right 91 now. indictment. 91 indictment specific. cases. Uh, grabbing people's private parts. He talking about, he just, you know, we want them back, right? They want them back. They want them back yeah. as a general culture, right? Yeah. What have you all taught your sons about politics and social awareness, man? And what are you doing now with the crazy way that the world is going and has evolved? Are you even weighing in on that now with them? As, as men. Wow, who, who wants to chime in on that one? That's that's loaded, man. This That's a serious thing. Um, I I'll, guess I'll go, oh, you go first. I'll, 
well, mine easy, man. Um, I, I, I didn't have the tools to teach my son about politics. You know, I didn't, I, I, I don't know a whole lot about politics to this day. Um, what little did I do know, my son taught me, you know, mm. um, my son, a journalist <clears throat> and, um, that very, that very guy you talk about, right? The, this, this leading the votes. Um, I think he fueled that interest, um, to, to learn about politics for my son and, um, and my son, not only that, man, my son has won numerous awards, consecutive years about politics, you know, covering, uh, those, 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 those different debates, those different, um, events and stuff. Um, hardest journalists, stand up journalists, um, what is that? Let me let me get it exactly right. Get it all the way. Yeah, right, get right, it right, all. Right. Get yeah. it all the way. Yeah, I, best I, I, television journalist, um, and best hard news reporter, two years consecutive in a row. Oh wow! Um, yeah. And yeah. And, and, win and, TV. and this this um when he was in college. Okay. He was presented with these um awards, and. And these are things that, that he shared with me because, you know, my wife, I mean, my son, my mother and my brother, they fuss at me all the time because I was like, man, I ain't voting. I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. And, man, they just go in on me hard. <clears throat> and um, the thing was growing up, and mine's a little long, I'm sorry, but growing, oh, growing up, um, you know, people say, well, your ancestors died you know, for this cause. And, you know, for my lack of ignorance and and those things, and, and not, you know, not to shame any anything, but that didn't have a strong enough drive for me mm -hmm. to to want to be interested in. Mm -hmm. that's no almost, connection. No connection, because that's almost like, um, I got a relative now that I might not know that passed away, like, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have those type of feelings because I, I don't have that engagement. I don't know. Not that I'm gonna be rude or cruel or whatever, mm -hmm. but I don't have that connection. Mm -hmm. But the way they could have connected with me as a person was, you know, would you have? Would you rather have um, um, dirt roads or, or paved roads? Okay. And these these the type of things that that, that connect the policy. And, and, so your daily and, life. And, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I can relate to it. You didn't right. understand the connection. I didn't. I didn't. They just saying vote. They saying well, nothing. Vote. He understand. He didn't but, care. But I, it, it was about. He all, cared about what was around. He all, did. He didn't know how it was connected to politics. Oh, I got you. Okay, I got yeah, you. Yeah, he okay. cared about oh, those I things. I understand. I understand. I got he just you. didn't understand how it was connected to politics. Okay. And I think there's more people that I would say like more like me than more people that is engaged in the situation. And the way it comes out is when you sitting in the office and you complaining, you know, about your taxes going yeah. up, you know, or the school systems. Did you watch school, cartoons? You know, uh, you know, sometimes I love cartoons. How the um, hell you miss Schoolhouse Rock? Cause that's how we that, all learned about the government but, and politics. But, but, <laughs> but, but, I'm, I'm just here, a I'm bill. bill. Yes, I'm, I'm just, only a I'm bill. I'm you about mine was Bugs Bunny and okay. Froghorn yeah. Leg. Hey, hey, well, you cor correct me if I'm wrong, right? So we're talking about official po uh, politics, right? However, I, growing up when you were a child, you navigating play playground politics up to when you was in the street street politics, and so someone can use that analogy. They, you could understand world politics. So I know you got some insights on the streets and how that work and the hierarchy and who does what, this, that, the other, and how the, the, the struggle, you know what I mean? For power, for money, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So if someone could use that analogy and compare it to the politics of the world, I think you'll get it easily. I, I, definitely street stuff. Yeah. Good. But, 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 but nobody there yeah. connecting the dots though. You, you, you gotta you make the distinction. The dots on the street you just use it has to have to use no, that I'm as just, an analogy. I'm, right, but I'm just, what I'm saying to you is, no nobody ever came to me in in that form before. But there's a difference between the politics of life and the politics of governance. Right. Correct. 
big you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I the mean, politics of sports yeah, is yeah. very different than Republicans and Democrats or independents right, or right. whatever. That, that's, yeah, you don't think the game no, politics is similar? No, to, it's uh, both, all of them are the art of we, It's the same word, but we're not talking about the same thing. Okay. So, so, so politics in governance is how we move and change law and set policy. Right. How you move and change and set something informal within the streets. It's how you run a, in business. It's how we distributing money. It's who in charge of what, you yeah, know? Right. But well, how does that make you aware of what we're naming as politics? Like, this, we talking, well, It's a politics within a family. You know what I mean? We use these words kind of interchangeably, interchangeably yeah, and we yeah, use yeah. them loosely, but yeah. that's not, well, that's we not the definition. Them, when people say interchangeable, you would, like if you go look up the definition of politics, they're going to have five definitions under there for politics. So they have different meanings. Correct. So it depends on your usage and the context in which you're using it. Right. Correct. And I think the context that he's using is different than us talking about formally our government operates, even Correct. though some of the things you do can translate. Absolutely. But I, I, Absolutely. I find it hard pressed to believe that somebody that just been governing on the street can get up into a legislative body and know how to get shit done up in there. Right. Other than talking to people, but I, he, there's a lot of structural and procedure. Yeah, I, I don't think it's different. It's no different than the, the street hustler can be a corporate hustler. If you apply, to, apply those same attitudes, those same lessons in a formal environment. And principles legal. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I think for me, instance, like, I don't know as far as like, you know, I know more of like, well, I mean, it's totally different now, but growing up, I knew more of street code stuff versus like the drug That's dealer the side of the, no, I, know, I know, but I don't want, you know, yeah. brother versus the drug dealer side of, yeah, of the politics. Just right. that clear. Yeah, yeah, but for sure. This is what I'm, I'm gonna, John, I'm gonna get back. We, we gotta get this clear. We gotta get this clear. <laughs> Clear the airway. It, it can, th look, this is what I'm saying. You said it's no different than corporate. Yeah, you you can be. And, and keep uh, in mind, it's the spirit of helping him understand the analogy and how that can relate. But what's how does that relate to us trying to talk about politics and social awareness about dealing with the daily activity, the politics in the street? Because sometimes that's all people got is their politics in their neighborhood, in the street. That that way more heavy than what else is going on in the world. Right. Just right. navigating. I it. see. I see what you're but saying. I don't you know? understand yeah. what the point is. The point Do you is. You understand? Does the point, no. The point, the point is, is he him was trying to. He had him. no interest in politics, and he don't understand it. Okay. And he was saying, "I'm ignorant to this, that, the other." And I was like, "Nah, you're not ignorant. Just apply what you know about the street politics and to this on a broader what, level." What can you a, take from the streets analogy. and apply to the general assembly and the legislative branch and the judicial branch? How you gonna apply that? So you don't think real organized no, games just get together? My, we, I'm we answering talk, your question. That's the politics of it. Do we talk in you ask a question, political you arena? The question. Three branches of government. What being well, in the streets going to teach you about that? We talking about what's more, this more organized. It's just simply more organized. You think gangs don't meet up? They don't have heads in certain areas? That's right. I'm, it's not it's as organized. To have a stop, absolutely. Talk, call them I'm, games again, I'm or call them street analogy. organizations because yeah. there is a certain well, hierarchy. So there is a certain structure. Business. There's a certain thing. It is. It's together for business. For the, it's That's all not, about, is it business or is it politics? Bro, the businessmen run the politics. It's all about making money and keeping the structure in place so people can make money. I took the question as... Um, governance governing that's what i thought the question was originally about and you saying it's the same thing again when he said he didn't mm -hmm. understand it i'm if you don't understand something and i give you an analogy how about this and oh okay that's similar i get it i'm not saying it's the exact same thing he's saying something re relatable but what i'm saying is talik was that's explaining why he's not politically aware right, right. that's what was happening Right. right, and he's right. saying I wasn't interested in politics. And then John's like, "Yeah, but 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 Talik wasn't doing it. He was just narrating his journey with politics on, in terms of the awareness piece. So I guess I was just trying to understand how the daily life connected to the bigger picture of his awareness that he was speaking about. That's what I was doing. So if you're saying to him, "Yo, you were actually living some politics and didn't know it," okay, I, I, I get you. Is that what? I got it. Is that what we were doing? I believe so. Absolutely. Okay.
I get that. Why y'all arguing though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Because yeah, they, yeah. The, the, some of the viewers say we always kumbaya hey, hey. and agree on everything. So but I like I, I like the what, spiciness to it. I tell you what, I like the fire. You gonna get a damn campaign with all the biggest drug dealers we grew up with, and I'm gonna run one with some trained politicians. Okay, we we, we, we talk about formalized education, <laughs> formalizing the system. You know what I mean? Versus putting this thing together on you. You, you mean to tell me it's not some hype, super intelligent cats? That can't. That's not what I'm, ta okay. I'm talking. I think about. we was already agreed. We okay, can. okay, okay. All right. I think, listen, listen. It, there are some. The most intelligent among us might be sitting in a jail cell right now. Right. 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 Oftentimes what, they are. What, what I'm saying is, when we're talking about politics and social awareness and the type of thing we're talking about, we're talking. And I, the frame I was was coming from was the government, Democrats, Republicans. Should you vote? Should what are not? we doing? What are the considerations you told your kids about politics? All of these types of things. So the daily activity of politics in terms of like street life or something, I, mean, I guess we could say it connects because you're doing some similar things, but that doesn't contribute to anybody on the streets awareness of politics. Okay. Maybe it don't matter. But. So great. let me pose the questions to everybody mad. Let me no, let me tell let me tell you what I told my sons about mm. politics and social Brain. awareness about this. So it started with me with coming out of uh to me politics the first lesson is that I taught is that the politics doesn't supersede your submission to God. That's the first thing about politics is putting it in its place. Right? Okay. You know, the restrictive law, uh, follow the laws of the land as long as it does not conflict with your religion. Right. Right. So my submission to God and my religion supersedes my interests or commitment to any politics. Right. Right now. So that's the first frame. The frame is, is that my value system and ideals and beliefs is primarily based on my belief system and not a political belief system of any party, right? And then the thing for me was that I'm teaching you is, is that um, Derek Bell um, and this whole critical race theory, right? That everybody's in controversy about. The whole, this is, it, it's at the core of politics. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because everybody keeps calling critical race theory um, you know, we we'll see so-called like DeSantis in them. Part of a woke the agenda woke and all of that. And all yeah, of yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. And they're basically trying to say, y'all talking about minority stuff too much and we uncomfortable and we don't want it and we want our own doctrination. So we willing to, even though y'all see it, we willing to just hide the history because we don't want our kids to know we evil and all the w wicked stuff America did. We don't want them to know that. Right. All right. So critical race theory and that's about the school stuff, but Derek Bell, who's a legal scholar, his point was, is that racism sits, they call it intersectionality in America. Racism sits at the corner and cores of any institution and system and structure in America to the, neck, to the benefit of the, the, the mass white population and to the detriment of minorities and disabled people and things of that nature. So his point is, you can't consider any con institution in America in its proper context without considering the impact of white supremacy and racism. So for me, it started with my sons, is understand this game that's going on, right? We got a game going on where you're a minority and this is how we got over here and this was going on. So really none of it's for you, mm. really. So when you talk about I'm in this party and I'm in that party, none of those parties are for you. You know, like, like Dr. Carla said, uh, people say, I'm in the Democratic Party. I'm in the Republican Party. And he said, fool, you wasn't even invited to the party. <laughs> right? Right, right. So, so the whole point is, my thing is my allegiance to, what I taught my son, my allegiance to if I participate in politics is to my beliefs and ideas and not individuals or groups or parties is in my belief in, in, in that type of thing. And now I'm going to got one shameful thing I'm going to say. It's funny. One shame. The first time I voted, I voted for myself. 
<laughs> Why is it shameful? That's not shameful. Because he should have been selfish, voting bro. before yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was not a participant that. in politics until I ran for school board. Mm. And the first time I voted, I voted for myself. Now, we might have, I'm, I'm trying to remember, because at first I was going to check myself and say, there's no way. I know you voted when you turned 18. But when I thought about it, I was in college and I was away and I didn't do absentee. Oh, and I so was 17 you, so you, when I went to college. So you didn't vote for Doug Wilder? I was 17. Yeah, I got When you. I left home, I didn't turn 18. That sounds like, that my son, vote. That sound like something my son would do, vote for himself. I did vote for myself. I trusted <laughs> myself. <laughs> well, but even right, more right. better, it was better that you was even running. Yeah, that's true. So, so that was the ultimate and I participation ran because in the system. the only black member on the school board retired, and there was no other black person going to be on it. So and you could have won election. if you would have listened. Who? You. Who, who should have won if you would listen? Who, what, what, how, what, who you ain't, ain't, ain't want to play their game. You think you're just going to be out there and run independently and win. <laughs> no, bro. You got to play the game. No, what and happened they, they was want you, he needed a gang to back him up. He, yeah, no. They wanted him to capitulate. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. this is what happened. <laughs> All right, what happened? Capitulate. What happened was I ran. And? There was another sister running at large. And we split the vote. That was what happened. She was running as the party person. Right. Technically. I wasn't but, but, in the party. That's my point. You, they wanted you to be a party person they and did. you didn't want to be a party person. Yeah. So they went and got her to be a party person. Right. That's true. You should have been a party person. You could have won. But the other party gave me more money. Like they that gave is me true. Money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, but look, so the point was. In a small town like this, you got two black people divide. I looked at the, I was researching something the other week and saw the article. Oh, right. I was okay. actually looking for an article on us because I got a, I got an idea of telling you about when we were doing the jazz show. Okay. And that stuff. But um, in the article, Gary Grant run, that was the guy that won, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he had 7,000 votes. I had uh, like, he, no, say if he had 6,500. Whatever it was, mine and hers combined would have beat him easy. But I, but I beat her. So the reason I didn't win is because she didn't fall back. <laughs> That's my point. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> yeah. People needed but, a representative for their party, and you ain't want to play the game. That's true. Because uh, I, I couldn't commit to a party that I know has been as destructive to our people as any party that anybody else would complain about. But what about the fact that had you got in and you've been in that position, now you can do what you want. No, you can't. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Once no you're you in cannot. There, 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 wait a minute. Once you're in there, you can vote how you want to vote. Now, you're not going to get reelected. Not if you want to stay in there. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to get reelected. Yeah. But you can get in there once. But, that, but, but, but when I go in, I want to go in being me. And, I, and if I win, I'm the me I was before I went in and the same me when I get in there. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't making you promises and hugging babies and lying to you because you're going to get upset when I tell this truth I'm going to have to tell. So was it better for the people not to have you in there? Maybe. It might not. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. no, the people no. needed them. No, it wasn't better for the people. Right, the people needed you at, in there. Because when I look at the data in Albemarle County Schools right now, I got a problem with it. Absolutely. Right? I got a problem. I got so, a problem so, with black and brown children and in the city schools. I got a problem with the data. And and I and I would have been a voice. No, I would have they would have found a scam and got they would have did something. Because <laughs> I've been telling too much, I've been too much fire going up in there. But in the end of the day, I'm not gonna act like I was some holy grail, but I do know that having gone through the school system as a student oh, yeah. and having been a teacher in it. And a, and it was and then now a parent in the county, I felt I had something unique to offer. You know so what would saying? you have, would you have done it differently today? No, I'm not gonna sign up and just say I'm in, oh I'm in your party, cause I'm not. Yeah, hey man, like for real. And now I, I get what I get for that. You lose then. You lose. Yeah. So did you win? Did we win? I won. The people say lost. Again. The people. The people didn't. lost. No, they didn't. They did. They lost because you they, wasn't in position. No, they you lost. You weren't in the spot. They lost because they weren't. They didn't. Let me let me say it like this. 
I don't know if they lost or not. Right. But ultimately, I'm going to say that some of them might have lost initially if they had an expectation. And there might be some children that some things that I could have contributed have helped. And I'm sure there have been some brothers and sisters here that have done a lot, made a lot of contributions to help. Um, but I will say this. They didn't lose because it wasn't this area couldn't contain somebody like me in the educational system because they're not ready for that. Because I saw what happened to uh, Scotty Griffin in the city schools. And even though she had some families, I saw the lynching that took place. And I was there. And I know I was going to be somebody that went hard. You would have got the same baby. treatment. Yeah, I would have got the same <laughs> treatment. And, and in light of that, and that is, let's talk about that. Because that's why I'm not here right now. It's because yeah. the opportunity for black professionals that are conscious and progressively thinking are limited in an area like this. And right. so we lost in the end. That's I why lost, ain't none of y'all here. I'm I the lost, only one I here. I lost in that battle, but I went into other areas and made contributions to black children that needed it. And, and today, we're going to win because I stand ready to come back. And this is for anybody in this area. Use me. And I'm coming back because I got interest in those babies at Greer Elementary School that was founded, uh, named after a black woman. Uh, who was a great educator in the county and a library that oh. made sure I knew how to read. Wow. So I got some work to do back here. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad my young people are old enough now so I can be political and socially aware back here. You can take the marrow. And, 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 I'm, and I'm coming to, and I want to make a difference. Are you making a declaration right now? I'm, I'm, I'm committing myself <laughs> to telling my story. And in my story, people are going to find that there's a whole lot that they need to learn about how to help these young brothers and sisters around you. Go ahead, man. Let's go, man. That's Even nice. Not, notwithstanding whatever progress they have done of good. It, we got some more things to do. You know, right. so. Right. Now, would you, your, yourself at the time, do you think that would have been selling out if you had joined one party or the other party? I think, but forget politics. I think if you do anything and you join it to join it, then you're selling yourself out. Even, that's, even if that's your only avenue to get where you got to go. That ain't no. my only avenue because my only avenue, I believe, is, is my faith. And I'm going to let God guide my conscience. So if my conscience convicted me and said, go do that, then I would have felt he was speaking to me in that way. And, and that didn't happen. No, that's, that's a real thing, man. And that's why, you know, that, that, what you're speaking to is, is, is why people become disenfranchised and, 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 and become, you know, just through with the system and the process mm -hmm. is because it really don't allow for space like people like yourself who come in with a strong set of convictions and principles and values that they want to adhere to. Because, you know, when you when you get into that office, you know, a lot of people, the criticisms of Obama mm -hmm. is that, you, you know, you come into that office and, um, you know, you got to do the things that, you know, the powers that be have put in place. Here is the most. And, oh, no, sorry. go ahead. Here is the most, Obama was the most scandal free president possibly in American history. Without Certainly in recently his recently. Absolutely. History, right? Absolutely. All you can say is, and, and, and this is where Derrick Bell was right. The only thing you can say is, his black behind wasn't even born here. You're going to question his birth, right, to be in the office because he's so skillful and brilliant enough to have put a machine together to win. Yeah. And, and, and you can't criticize his intellect like they usually want to do with people of color. You can't criticize his work ethic like they usually want to do. His education. You can't criticize his education. So the only thing you say, you know what? You weren't born here. And that's the most <laughs> childish, juvenile sandbox stuff going on and Sam there are Bucky. and i'm saying this publicly yeah. and listen i can love anybody I'm, I'm fine i know we got like uh caucasian people we grew up with that are republicans we got black people that are republicans i'm fine with the you choose a party for that i have many conservative values right for sure we my, do. this is my question though to you how in the world when you know that when you see somebody questioning this man's thing like without evidence and all of this and you say well you know what I see that. I see that he talks 
about touching women's body parts. I see that he talks down on minorities. I see that he talks terrible about Mexican, but for me, I want him in office because it serves my personal view of how I want certain tax things done. Bro. That is the most corrupt, moral failing that a human being can have. Mm. And that's what we're dealing with. And that's why I got a problem with people that we grew up with and know and love. And you see George Floyd's neck on the ground. And you see Freddie Gray in the back of an ambulance dying. And you want to ask me about how I'm doing or how my children, good to see your children. Where's your post about the pain? Right. Preach. So don't talk Preach. to me about why you're not in my world. Yeah. About why I might feel standoffish to you. And you know me. Excuse me. Yeah, man. that's all right. Preach, brother. So that's why I don't yeah. play no politics. It ain't no game. Yeah. So Thank if we're not you. talking about freeing people and really helping them, then I'd be rather, I'd rather cooperate with liberated independent people and figure out how to build our own institutions. That's where I'm at with it. The Voice to Men podcast or B2M podcast is about five guys who've been friends for over 40 years. Between the five of us, we've been married for over 100 combined years. Between the five of us, we have 13 children, 12 sons. We discuss in our podcast about our journeys into fatherhood and how we raised our sons to be fine young men. From six-figure earners at LinkedIn to a professional Call of Duty player, college-educated entrepreneurs, that's who we are. Our podcast is not a how-to-do-it podcast. It is a podcast about how we did it. Come check us out. Hey. Yes, sir. That should have yes, been the sir. end. Yeah, we, we only 30 minutes <laughs> in. Well, but, that's it for this segment, guys. Hey, hey, you know what? You know yeah, what? Yeah, man, I, 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 I'm not, but you know. You know yeah. what? For real. For real, man. Yeah. I, you know, and I, I, I'm sure I know my son is is, is doing it to to uh, get under my skin sometimes. Uh, but he'll say, Darius will say to me, I, he said, I, I'm voting for Big T next time. Mm. You know, <laughs> I'm voting for Big T. And yeah. he's saying it just to get under my skin. Right. But but that's what we talking about because you know now he making money and yeah and, and now he want his little tax breaks right. and he want all that now I'm like nah man you know and so a lot of times man people you know forget where they come from or now they start voting for their own personal interests yeah and or or even worse vote against your personal yeah. interests for financial for potential for, financial for goal. some foolishness because you've been tricked or because you go to the country club with you them. know I um. To talk about what we taught our kids from day one, from the very first time there was an election when they were born, every single election, you can ask the fellas, my wife and I took them in the, in the polling booth every mm -hmm. single time, every single time, let them push the buttons, let them fill it out. This is very, 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 very important. You don't even know why we're here. You just come on in here and watch us do this. So every single time, me and my wife have never missed an election. I mean, I've never missed an election. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Primary, whatever. Super important. And when it was time to vote for President Obama, hey, not only did we go in there, like, I took a video of my son actually voting for I Obama. The yeah, I did. I did. I did. I had, to, I had to hide it. I was like, I was like, son, you pushed the button. Now I was recording everything. Yeah, yeah, it's a violation. And um, but not only that, inauguration, we were there. I'm gonna take my family there. We're mm -hmm. gonna go to the uh, inauguration. And it was probably the second coldest day of my life ever <laughs> being out there in that cold. <laughs> I was but, there. But the family, I wanted them to see it. I want them to understand. And then I wanted to, I always try to teach them, you know, how they fit into all of this that's going on. Like these folks are making decisions that impact your yeah, life. Yeah, that's a fact. And that's yeah. the bottom line. And you got to have some say so mm -hmm, in the matter. Mm -hmm. And I tell anybody, anybody, um, when decisions are made at the table, if you are not at the table, you are on the menu. You, if you are not at the table when decisions are being made, you gonna be on the menu. And you're going to be eating alive. And you better make now, sure. This, this, is, this is your thing you on are, politics, too? Huh? Yeah. This might be the fight time. Fight time. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's hey, hat. You on the menu anyway. Listen. You on the menu anyway. You absolutely on the menu. You on but the menu you have anyway. some influence based on this this the system we got, bro. It's a lesson. This is the system we is. got. It is. It is. And, 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 and so it's crumbling. I, ain't no day. doubt about it. it. And it's jacked up. But here, I, I'll say this too. I can't name another system in the world that I say replace this with. Because this system run the world. That's right. So, so don't yeah, you want to be in the system that's running the world? Nah, not, it, not, if it's, not if it's on its way out. Is Do it the system or is the people running the system? It's always the it's people the, that run the system. So it's the people, okay. It's always the people. And we got to put, you know, m one of my favorite quotes, and, and, and my family can, can share this with you. George Bernard Shaw says, democracy ensures that you get a government no better than you deserve. It's the people. Eh. It's the people. Mm -hmm. and, and when you look at the failing educational system in this country and what they will and will not teach, that's why we got the politicians that we have. It's because they've been able to keep the people ignorant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very important for us to educate ourselves, educate our people, educate our children on what's going on and how you can participate. And we all know it's one thing to have national politics, but the policies that oh, are yeah, made yeah, no but a the, few blocks from here, that. Make all the difference in the world in your daily life. I was gonna say local but, politics to me is is a is a no brainer. Okay, I, I would consider local politics a no brainer because right. I can and because and because local politics is also less impacted by the empirical wicked structures of politics than national politics is. Yeah, you see what I'm I, saying? Absolutely. That that C is absolutely is infinite. Now, now in this circle here. It's more manageable. It's more manageable. <laughs> and I can tangibly see, like, you know what? That guy, I might, like, I lick. I know Corey. I used to play football with him. He's running for school, boy. I like that guy. Or this guy, like, local here, yeah, he helped get the signs up in them street lights over there, like Talik was talking about. Right. But when we get into that national game, that's why I said yeah. we on the menu, yeah. because it's so wicked that I can't tell. I tell you what. You know how when they say you, when you see two fools? arguing from a distance you can't tell i mean who the fool who the fool two people are you can't tell who the fool is you if anybody were trying to figure out who were the best and who were right it's impossible for you to figure it out with and, the wickedness that both parties have impact and, and acted on people and that's that's exactly what i was gonna say you got and i'm speaking from a, a probably the less qualified up here to talk about it but i'm just saying you you got so much that they they doing all this promising and no delivering and all you got all these lies going back and forth i think that's what frustrate and that's what you like you know what at the end of the day i still gotta work i still gotta pay my bills let y'all do whatever y'all want to do and they that's just though. saying they deliver but it's i'm just saying that's the, <laughs> that's the i'm just saying that's the yeah, frustrating no, I get you, I get you. that's the frustrating part when you trying to go back and forth and, and learn all the stuff and you like, at the end of the day, I still got to go work and eat or whatever. Now, I do vote, but I'm telling you, this is what my thought pattern is yeah, a lot that. of the time. And I'm pretty sure I ain't the, I might be the few that might speak out about it, mm -hmm. but I believe there's a ton to go on yeah. in, those, in those situations. Real quick, as far as what the original topic with regards to political awareness and so on and so <laughs> forth. It's crazy because I, Chill and I are very much alike with regards to, you know, ig ignorance of politics or even concern to an extent. That's why I was, I was listening to Waz like, he go, he go way back with regards to it. However, it wasn't until my <laughs> I was probably mid, mid 30s that I was listening. You know, I used to listen to um, my guy, Neil, Neil, Neil Bortz, Bortz. Neil Bortz. Neil Bortz. Yes. When I was in that, when I was in Atlanta <laughs> and funny. then all the way up to the time when, you know, then I uh, ended up in Carolina. And it was this time that I was working with these two Caucasian fellas uh, with this, uh, they had a uh, print, you know, um, copier type situation that we were doing. And one of the, the salesmen that, you know, that I used to talk with a lot because he would listen to, I think, Rush. Rush Limbaugh. Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh. And we would, you know, we would talk and I just found it interesting to hear. And he had been, you know, in, in our conversations, because I, again, I'm in my mid thirties, just kind of getting like an idea with regards to the importance, you know, 
or what seemed to be important about it. And he he he, he was um 19, you know, when he because he was at, I guess probably around maybe a few years younger than I was at the time, but he was politically aware from you know 19, you know what I'm saying? From the time that he kind of got involved or where his father kind of had, you know, whether it was discussion or how however you said you came to your boys uh in the way ball. And, and it was like, man, well, you know, I wish I had at least an, a better uh, idea regarding politics at a much younger age. Mm -hmm. However, of course, it's never too too late. But I never really had and, and, and you know, still don't um, with regards. I mean, with the passion you showed, that's you pretty much express my position as well. Um, however, it, it just and, and as uh, Talik just said, it's very frustrating because. And, and I, I don't know if you all, you remember this, but I did uh, at the time of what, 2020, mm -hmm. pandemic time and all of that, right? The election was coming up. You know, you hear, you know, uh, black folks talking about, you know, there's really n no one that, that, you know, that represents us. That, that You know what I'm saying? That, that basically our vote was up for grabs. It's, you know, whoever yeah, yeah. represents best. You can get the vote yeah, or whatever. Yeah, or they I were complaining like, about. Vote for me. Right. I'm sorry. What was you about no, to say? I'm piggybacking on what you're saying because a few years ago, I was having a conversation with a colleague and they were talking about politics and stuff like that. And uh, they made a statement like, John, you too. I, I, I basically said, I'm, I, I, I vote for one, one thing only. They said, you too, you too smart to vote for one issue. Well, I'm voting for one issue and that's race, right? Mm -hmm. Because race encompasses housing, schools, income taxes etc everything the police right but now how do we decipher between the lesser of two evils you know what i mean so we know we got the voting for the lesser of two evils but it's still it's still difficult to decipher that and i would i do want to apologize to the uh to everybody because i wasn't a good deacon just now when you spoke you know what i mean because i should have been shouting with you, you know what i mean and i might have had james back me up what do you say let the church Say, hey, <laughs> Nuevo Black has spoken. <laughs> right, we, we could have just, be just dropped amen. the mic at that because exactly because it's hard to follow that. And, but and oh, go ahead. Bro. I had to. Re I I felt it necessary because I don't hardly post stuff. You know what I mean or whatever. But back in August twenty 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 post. Yeah, you pull it up. Yeah. Oh wow. All right, go ahead. On the brink of one of the most polarizing U.S. presidential elections, it's interesting to listen to people discuss the Republic Democratic experiment we are experiencing as though it is the slash our true functioning form of governance. Republic democracy from its inception to, to present day has always been a centralized, centralized government run for the benefit of the whole by an elite ruling class. Um, and that whole has not always been what we see it as today. Initially, those who were allowed to vote were wealthy white landowners. Then all white men, black men once freed, and not until 1920, women gained the right to vote. Please do not forget that because of post-Reconstruction Jim Crow laws, blacks were effectively barred from voting until the 1960s. And a well-hidden example as to uh, why this was so is the Wilmington, North Carolina massacre of uh, 19, 1898. It wasn't until the mid-1990s when the National Voter Registration Act came into effect that most Americans enjoyed wide access to exercise their right to vote. As stated by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, history is above all our studies the most attractive and best qualified to reward our research as it develops the springs and motives of human actions and displays the consequence of circumstances which operates most powerfully on the destinies of the human being so uh, my whole point was to say you know to to the, you know all of this which, which was said at the time from you know most of black people you know celebs ice cube saying hey we need to do this and we need to do that um it was like the u.s president's president simply presides over congress since we don't seem to truly understand how this republic uh, democracy should work in theory, whereas elected officials carry out the will of the people. I suggest we shift our focus and urgency to our local and state elections, which we kind of touched on this, uh, a few minutes ago, right? And uh, I also propose, propose, need I 
say dare black Americans and those who claim to presently support and or join our struggle form our own political party. You know what I mean? Because I was, I was tired of hearing, hey, we're not getting nothing from the Democrats. We're not getting nothing from the Republicans, blah, blah, blah. And said, and uh, then I said, and if, or just sit down and shut the up. <laughs> no. and that's what I stated and that's what I posted because I was just tired of what would seem in, in, and I ain't calling my man why naive, but to believe in the game as you so passionately were saying, it's, it's, not, it's really not a game, but that's how they play it. Never, it's, it's just so crazy to sit and watch both parties just out of spite of the other. Whenever, whenever one is in, in, in administration, it's like they got to go against it just because. You know what I'm saying? Remind, you're a pro, yeah. pro <laughs> huh? Remind you of pro wrestling. Pro <laughs> wrestling. Right. You know what I mean? Pro wrestling. And so, there, and and, you know, instead of this, you know, trying to reach across the aisles and so on and so forth and come to truly, again, for the benefit of, 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 of most Americans and all people, it's just a freaking game and a ploy. So that's, you know, it's not much that I tried to teach my boys about it with regards to other than this politics and, 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 <laughs> and not true politics is is to, uh, you know, again, I, I couldn't say it any better than, and, and or more passionately than uh, what my man Nuevo said. And it's just, all, it's well, all really just a know, game. Did you just, did Chat GP just wrote that? I saw him go find it. I, hey, man, it, was, it, was, it was a long post. I got, I got, I got, this is the thing too, because I want to, I think we got to get to the core and there's no way this hour, we're going to have to do two episodes on this three or four. This, but this is one thing we got to talk about because this is the problem in our community and that we got to talk about what we're telling our children about this. You got those people like me that say, listen, if, 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 if there's a situation we're talking about electoral processes, we're talking about uh, participating in the democratic process, mm -hmm. we're talking about uh, making a difference and being a, a responsible citizen, um, but in light of uh, oppression going on, in light of poverty, in light of climate problems, in light of all of the failings we see in a culture, I say, you know what? I choose to focus my energy not on participating in that, right? Mm -hmm. I choose to focus my energies on building in the area where I live and building coalitions with people and holding, hoping to build a economic power base in the black community so that we have more, we can speak from a more position of power when we do get into those spaces, right? Um, so therefore, I don't want you to judge me if I say I'm choosing not to vote, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when the thing that somebody said earlier come out. They died yeah. in this passion, brother. I'm telling me like, yeah. it's yeah. Pass they, we passionate Absolutely. about that. Then on the flip side, this is where I am with it, on the flip side, if you like Waki well, said, look, you going in the booth, you gonna participate, you gonna do this, guess where I am on that? I have no problem with it. I just don't want you to place a judgment on me for my non-participation when my non-participation is actually a message about my participation. It's actually a vote. What I'm voting for is I'm voting to say no one is good enough for me to put the democratic vote you entrusted me with if I'm truly believing in the Constitution. Because nobody on either side is embodying that. Because what the Constitution said to me was, if you get, if, in the, if, if this nation does these certain things, this is, this is what they're following. It says, um, but when a tra long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object, events is a design to reduce them under absolute depotism, oppression for different populations, right? It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Mm. So if I say I'm not participating, what if I say, no, I'm upholding the Declaration of Independence? Cause it said, y'all not with me. It said we supposed to be throwing all of them off. So you with the January 6th people? No, no. <laughs> let, me, let me say this. Let no, me say no, no. For real though, I feel you 100 percent on that. Yeah. And everything you said you are doing, I'm doing as well. Yeah. What I'm saying is, it's not either or. It's both. It's and. You know what? Absolutely, do all of that. But you know what? Right now, this is what we're working in. I'm gonna go participate. 
I'm going to cast my vote, but then I'm going to go back. And you know what I told my son? I always said in our house, racism, true racism impacts our health care, <laughs> our economics, our housing, our judicial system. It impacts all of that. All right. But if you get yourself some money, if you get yourself some money and they can't control the doctor that you have, they don't control the school you go to. They don't control the house you live in. You can buy yourself one of the best lawyers in town. If you get yourself some money, you can reduce the impact of that racism to mere personal prejudice. You can reduce it as it relates to you. Exactly. But exactly. you can't impact. So, can't so no, 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 no. So that's why I said do both. I'm going to go participate in this system to try to help the masses, but this is what I'm doing for me and my family. Okay, but do you place mm, judgment like interesting. on somebody like me that said, you know what, I don't Yeah, I don't do you know that. why, you know why? Because I know the system is designed, that's the trick, to get so you, you to say no, I ain't playing, to get you to no, not participate. But the difference is, is you subjecting no. yourself to a belief in a system as opposed to a belief in your belief about life, period. No, and so I don't you believe willing in the system. To be comfortable in life, I'm gonna go along to get along, and I'm willing to say, I'd rather just not do it then. I'd rather, I'd rather change the government to serve the people. Well, a no vote is a vote. That's what that's what I was saying. That's right. And, and, and what I'm saying what? is they don't want you to vote. They don't want you to vote. They glad you don't vote. Why you think they're doing voter suppression all over the country? You know what? They, glad, they don't want you to vote. They glad we don't vote and they glad we do vote. It don't, they, there's, listen, it ain't enough of us. And, and, and let me tell you what happened. We here. are enough no, 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 because no, we on, the margin. Say, no, I got another one. We the margin. We, we the, the margin. margin. We the margin for 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 uh, <laughs> one party to say, you know what, uh, we gonna take all the tax money and cut all the welfare programs, and the other party to say we gonna cut all the welfare problems, but we really not gonna fundamentally fix what's causing anything. And you neither one of y'all helping me. That's true. Ne it, neither that one is of y'all. And you gonna be gone in four years. You know what I'm saying? So hey, there is no like. So in terms of that point you just made to me, it's like, again, I don't judge. I said, okay, brother going on that way. And see, that's what I think. That's why I said we need to talk about it in our community because that keeps us polarized when we know the math, four and three equals seven, five and two. So you got a strategy and all of us can't do the same strategy, right? You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, but my thing again is I believe we get lost in the hope of a dream and then you see what happened. I used to say this, you gonna remember Waukee. Mm -hmm. I used to say it. I said, before, they used to tell us in 2042, African Americans are going to be the majority in the country. Now I think it's, it's going to be Latinos first, right? But mm -hmm. I said, before they let us become majority and dominate all the elections because we got the numbers, I said, they'll change the form of government. Mm. You now, sure how much did? your damn vote matter when they changing the damn legislation areas and voter suppression. How much your vote matter now? When when they doing all of the things they're doing and stealing elections and trying to steal elections. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you so, always said it and, and, you know, and that never when we you know you if you believed in the system, you believe in democracy and capitalism and all that, never have you seen a more blatant effort to say we don't care nothing about democracy. It, right. All we care about is power. Yeah. And money. You know? All we care mm -hmm. about is power and money. Oh. Yeah. You know, is this and, a producer? Redistricting, you say redrawing the voting maps? The gerrymandering, they call yeah. it, right? Yeah, Jerry. Yeah, oh, they do that every they do that every so many years. Yeah, they and they that. just made them redo it, right? The yeah. government. And, yeah, and the, the other court. thing about politics for a person like myself, if you it is almost like a con artist, so to speak, in my <laughs> eyes. If you listen to them too long, they're very convincing, right? It's, <laughs> it's, it's like it's like man, they dress up a, a pile of boo boo on the table. It just sounds so pretty. Yeah, yeah. From both parties, you're like, well, I don't know who to deal with. Like, oh, that sounds good. That sound good. But what I will tell you, and I know the for my personal, like what you was saying about about dairy, for my personal life, in my personal situation, when. When 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 the Republicans was in there, my money was up. <laughs> I remember you saying you, that the other yeah. I'm a few just weeks telling ago. you for me. That's a fact. Oh, my money you was ain't make money with Obama's in office, man. Bro, I'm telling you for me. <laughs> he said no. I, I think they told that's, you that. 
No, I'm no, looking, looking they, at they, my that's money. That's the truth. The taxes. That is the truth. I'm, they, they, the ta- I'm looking at my taxes. money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't nobody tell me about my money. I'm yeah. telling you. When, when and that's real. That, now, if money is that important to you, then yeah. And what, and what Corey's whole diatribe was about you making a decision for more than just yourself and you're thinking about your people. Yeah, obviously I was thinking about my people. So, so, so <laughs> that's, that's, cool. that's yeah. the whole point in what he was saying. Like, but, don't say your people out because you want a tax break. That's what. That's the whole point. Don't sell your people out. Don't sell, and not just your people, the poor people of this country. Yeah, yeah. Don't sell the poor people of this country out because you want a tax break and put a few extra thousand dollars in your whatever, millions in some people's cases, in your pocket. Think about other than yourself. You know, that's that was the whole point of that whole conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, we got to make some decisions. You know, I, yeah, I know my tax is going to be different when I, when certain people in office but i'm willing to i'm willing to eat that for my people i don't know and that's true and the tax is going to be different i don't know how much difference is, i mean we i don't know how much it, that translates into 40,000 extra whatever i don't know whatever it is is normal I, but we we like it if you get absolutely. more coming it's good right but the the other part is though for me because of my love for my people and my love for the oppressed, black, brown, white, poor, yeah. I don't poor. care. Right. Because of my love for it, the cost on my soul to see them suffer because I supported something that was that I know I ain't believe in, that cost would be more than the dough I got on the other end. I mean, <laughs> Cause I Big just couldn't live what, with myself. What, hey, Cole, you know what, what do you? What would you say to the people? Cause you you mentioned a few times the people that would judge you, judge you, that would say that folks fought and fought and fought, and we knew sometimes we're picking the lesser two evils and have inch by inch incremental slow 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 development, and they say that hey man we paved this way for you. You do you really want to know what I said? What I say to people? Yeah yeah because you because you mentioned a few times don't judge me if about I don't about time. Myself, yeah. About yeah. time some of y'all would have. We've been doing this shit for 400 years. We tired. Y'all, about time y'all start swinging. All right. Because if they ain't changed in 400 years, I'm not <laughs> mad at you for changing the strategy. <laughs> and uh, I'm not really talking here about is, swinging. I'm yeah, talking yeah, yeah. about cooperative economics. That's what I'm really talking about. Absolutely. And cooperative politics in our community. Here, so that's, what, that's what I say to them. I be like, do you think they would really be upset with me based on what they see happening though? Cause they've had a belief that that was gonna do something for them. That's Absolutely. my point. And, and, and here's the be- here is what we all must understand about the system of government that we have. Nothing changes without mass protests, nothing. Mm-hmm. This country and this world should think the poor and brown people of America for moving this country closer towards a more perfect union. We not there, we know we not there, but the progress and the fact, look where we sitting. That's always an easy, easy anecdotal look at our lives. Look at the lives we all live right now. You know, we know we not where we wanna be, but we moving towards that and we gotta understand, here's how you participate. Mass protests. When you want things done, you got to show up at city council meetings. You have to show up at board meetings. You have to get on commissions. You got to get on all of these things to impact change. And when we're not getting a change, it's a reason 1963 March in Washington had an impact on this society. Because 250,000 people was on that mall in Washington, D.C. I can't, I can't account for that progress like you. Cause none of the data, none of the data says there's been progress except right. a few people living more luxurious than others. But on the mass level, there's not been we and that we can do it with white folks sitting next to it. But more, and, and I want to say that could if, if integration so never you happened, wait, no let me finish. all right if integration <laughs> never happened and we continued to develop the economic structure that we had during segregation, which was which was powerful. We had our own stuff. I right? agree. We I agree. A thousand percent. Up until this point. And to a point where we still have even 
We can, we can have more economic power now than we do under the integrated system. I don't deny that. You know what I'm saying? I don't, de so I do I don't deny that. that. But so here, here is what I am saying. There was a time when the Emmett Tills of the world got dragged out of the house and lynched. All right? There was a time. Now it's when Breonna it, Taylor. When, I can give you a name for everybody you bought the name. No, that's what I'm saying. And what I'm saying is, there was a time when Derek Chauvin would not be sitting in prison right now, all right, for putting his knee on George Floyd's neck. There was a time he would not be in prison, but today he is. This is so juicy. And he in prison because they burnt the damn police station. Mass protest. That's right. right. That's right. right. Mass so protest. Mass protest is not the expected participation in the system. Mass protest was what I was reading from the Declaration of Independence, is that you're supposed to overthrow that. That's that's right. That's right. So but, that wasn't like that wasn't no voting that, that made that happen. What got him in jail was them them folks that you know they ready to burn. And and back. that's what I'm saying. We understand that going in and 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 pushing a button here there ain't gonna bring it. And that's yeah. why I said nothing does it but mass protest. So, uh, yeah, you weren't nothing so does it. And, but I'm still gonna go participate. Cause I'm gonna do both. I got you. I'm gonna do both. And you do, I'm do go, both. Uh, yeah, that's right. You do. That's right. Yeah. Unite the right rally. Yeah, you do. When the, when the tiki right. torch jokers showed up in Charlottesville, I had my whole family yeah. down there for that. Right. Right. You know, right. And, right. and people were saying, "Why are you going down there?" The, they tiki torch guys down there. Why are you going down there? And I told them, I said, "Let me tell you something. If if my wife came to me and told me she had stage four cancer, I'm not gonna ignore that." And the same way I'm not going to ignore her stage four cancer, I'm not going to ignore these racists down here because I believe that the racism is a cancer on the society and we got to address it. And I wanted my kids to know that they had a role to play in fighting that. That wasn't somebody else's fight to fight. You have a role to play in that fight. And I need you out there representing this family and speaking against the nonsense that's going on down there. And so that's exactly why we were down there. We're not going to ignore what's going on. And that's what we did. Mm. It's the B2M Crew podcast at the Cold Base co-working <laughs> facility. Wonderful facility, facility in downtown Charlottesville talking about politics and social awareness and things that we share uh, with our children. Definitely a topic that we have a lot more to add Oh my to gosh, yes and, sir. And more layers <laughs> and... Thanks for you all for tuning in. And Waki, you got something to take us out with? That's right. As always, in the words of the great Frederick Douglass, it is easier to raise strong children than to repair broken men. Good night. And we are Peace.